and welcome to the CBR Video Podcast. I'm Jason Stamper, the editor of Computer Business Review. So we're here today to talk about cloud computing, very much the topic of the day, what Gartner might call at the peak of inflated expectations. So I'm joined today by Fujitsu's Glenn Fitzgerald, technical director for the UK, and also Darren Ratcliffe, service offering manager for Infrastructure as a Service. Hi guys, how are you today? Good morning, very well, Good. thank you. Good. Great, thanks very much for joining us for this video. So Glenn, if I could start with you, you know, there are lots of different definitions of cloud. What are your customers actually doing in this space today? And I think this is a very important question. Uh, there's a great deal of excitement in the marketplace about cloud technologies and cloud services. But it's important for potential consumers of these new things to understand what they're going to get for their money effectively. And the benefits of a, of a cloud type approach to the provision of, of IT services are quite simple and they can be expressed in a relatively few sentences. Firstly, there's flexibility. Because of the, the, the cloud model, the amount of uh, stuff, IT services, hardware, software, whatever, uh, that need to be consumed by an organization to deliver the application services that it requires can change much more quickly than they can in a traditional model where there's investment up front in a static asset. Secondly, there's a positive change in the financial model. So instead of having these large capital assets that organizations need to invest in up front to get the service they need, they can effectively take these on a pay-as-you-go basis, paying uh, only for what they use when they use it, uh, and also, therefore, they don't need to make the large investment up front. As well, this is beneficial to many balance sheets, so people don't have these large capital assets sitting depreciating away. The next benefit is, is to do with maintaining the services. In a traditional environment, things get bored, they age and they are depreciated and then they have to be replaced. These uh, are not only expensive for people consuming IT services, they're also disruptive because the migrations are often not simple and they need to be engaged in by people with the right professional skills. That effectively comes for free in a cloud environment because it's built into the cloud services. And I guess finally is, is the, the, the advantage of scale. So because cloud is delivering to many, many customers at the same time, the economies of scale that can be achieved are greater than an individual organization can achieve on its own. Of course, this, this advantage is reduced as the particular organization gets larger and larger, but by and large, cloud can do it cheaper per unit as well. And Darren, you know, most analysts say that there are at least two or three different types of cloud. They've talked about public cloud, private cloud, I think shared community cloud is the latest. Um, which of these does Fujitsu believe is better? You know, is there a particular take that you have on this? Cloud, again, is, it, it's, it's perceptional. So um, Fujitsu, um, in how they're delivering their cloud service, are delivering into the enterprise and small-medium enterprise space. Um, the, need to do, the, the need associated with doing that um, means that we have uh, effectively a private cloud um, solution but that private cloud is not just an on-customer um, site solution. That's one that we also run in our data centers in a, in a shared multi-tenanted environment with all of the security that our enterprise customers are looking for and, and performance and, and, and assurance associated with that. So when you look at, at what the analysts are talking about with regards to public and private and, 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 and the in-between clouds, um, there is no single answer. It, uh, the, the consumers of cloud will make their minds up over time as to where the right place is to place the systems that, that, that they have um, based on a number of criteria. Cost will be one of them, but cost, is, cost will be at one end of the spectrum and then security and assurance will be at the other side of the spectrum and somewhere along those lines, public, private and, uh, and, and assured clouds um, will, will come into play. And I think it's important to realise that this is not a religious war. Many large organizations will consume cloud type infrastructures in both of those modes. Um, for example, many large organizations are beginning to change the way they think about their workforce, um, perhaps dividing them into what might be described as process workers and knowledge workers. Process workers working at a relatively lower level, less access to sensitive security controlled information, effectively executing set uh, sequences of work. For those people, uh, organizations may well take a public type solution with the characteristics that Darren described. Uh, not quite so secure, very, very cheap, not quite so functional. Whereas for other parts of their organization, people with access to 
commercially or security sensitive documents, people with the ability to change those documents, knowledge workers to coin a phrase, um, they will need more, more private oriented uh, services with higher functionality, higher uh, auditable and provable security. So it's not one or the other, it's horses for courses. Okay. But Glenn, you know, companies may well be starting to move towards cloud, but they obviously still have that on-premise investment, their legacy systems and so on. What kind of integration are they going to get between what they already have and these new cloud services? Uh, there is, uh, and the, the way of solving that problem is in the proper service management wrap. So the, the, the key distinction between those two types of deliveries is the... Uh, the the amount of multi-tenancy that's going on on the individual infrastructures. One important thing to remember is that the technologies in the two types of cloud are, by and large, the same. The same storage, the same virtualization, the same server, the same network. Uh, there's no particular difference in the way the technology delivers these services. The difference between the two is in the fact that one is dedicated and one is shared between many people at, at the highest level of simplification. Therefore, the way to manage transition between the two, which clearly identifies a necessity for organizations to work seamlessly, is in the service management wrap. So if the service management wrap has got clear, concise service tiers, service characteristics, service level agreements, and workflow processes to take you through various stages, somewhere it's in the public cloud, somewhere it's in the private, it's that uh, defined set of things to do that will avoid the sorts of problems you're talking about. Uh, and also, and in addition to that, I think as as cloud starts to mature, just just as all other areas of IT have matured over time, standards start to come into force, and, and there's a clear definition of how public and private and multiple public and private clouds can all start to interoperate together. And I think once those standards start to come into force, it'll become a lot clearer for how consumers of cloud computing can look at placing what they consider to be the right payloads into the right parts of the cloud. And I know that Fujitsu believes that some companies aren't yet ready for cloud. What do you think is holding them back? I, my, my personal opinion after talking to a number of CIOs recently is, is it's, it's not necessarily that they're not ready to move to cloud. I think it's, it, it, it goes back to the earlier um, conversation we were having, which is a lack of understanding, a lack of clarity as to what exactly cloud is. I mean, in general terms, it's just, it's just this area where they can go and they can buy computing from. What needs to occur is there needs to be a lot more conversations with the IT buyers and, and, the, and the more, more actually these days the, the business associated with buying computing from within their own IT departments to gain an understanding of exactly what types of services can be bought through cloud. Cloud is not just one type of computing as we've mentioned, you know, there, there, there are areas where you can buy um, secured um, cloud services in trusted data centers and there are areas where you can go and you can buy open public. So it's about getting the message across to the IT buyers in organizations to allow them to be able to use that information to allow them to start to believe that they can start to trust this, this cloud environment. And there's also the issue of demonstrable benefit. Uh, as, as Darren and I have tried to indicate, there's no magic in the cloud. Um, and if people are moving from a relatively traditional way of doing IT services to what's really only another way of delivering the same service because it's still people pushing buttons to deliver a business service at the end of the day, you have to be able to demonstrate positive benefits in financial terms before most organizations will start this transition. Now one of the things that, that Fujitsu has learned through a process of doing this for many, many years is that aggressive transformation campaigns to say at a point in time we will move this entire estate from this to that, whatever this is and whatever that is frankly, rarely work. This is because you're throwing away a lot of the sunk investment in the existing infrastructure. That stuff's being depreciated, it's an asset on the company's, uh, uh, on the company's balance sheet. You can't just throw it away at a point in time. So our approach, as I say honed through a lot of years experience of doing this kind of thing, is to create the capability within an organization to move from, let's say in this case, traditional computing into cloud. But only make that movement for each business service at a point in time where there is a disjunct in the service anyway, a hardware refresh, a new version of an application, a big middleware upgrade.